Good morning, everybody. This is Lisa Fritz with BCC Distribution. Thank you so much for joining uh, BCC Distribution and Zebra Technologies for the webinar this morning in regards to Zebra's product roadmap to include their mobile and vehicle terminals, tablets, and printers. Um, but before we pass the controls over to Eric Hilton at Zebra, who is the North American Regional Portfolio, uh, Portfolio Manager, um, I'd like to first pass the phone to John Newman with BCC Distribution for a quick introduction or reintroduction of who BCC Distribution is. And I do want to note before John starts talking that if we have any questions um, throughout the webinar today, please send those over to the chat box and we will do the Q&A presentation piece um, at the end. Okay, thanks, John. Thanks, Lisa. Anyone that knows me knows that uh, if there's ever an opportunity for me to open my big mouth, you know I'm going to take it. So, hello, good morning. Welcome to everybody's uh, living room, bedroom, basement, whatever it might be. I do want everyone to know that BCC is uh, is in business. Our warehouse is open. Our, uh, uh, our business is doing day-to-day -day activities. Uh, we do have a skeleton crew, which is me, which makes me the fattest skeleton that exists. <laughs> but uh, I do want everyone to, to understand that if anyone does need anything regarding labels and ribbons and scanners and printers, um, or even some antibacterial spray, which uh, Lisa can, can talk about at the very end, we actually have some customized antibacterial spray, which uh, feel free to uh, respond to Lisa at the end, and we will send out a couple of... Uh, Quarters for you. Uh, first of all, I think all of you, maybe some of you, signed up for the uh, our Ford Field Sales and Marketing Barcode Scanning Extravaganza that was supposed to be today. Uh, I apologize. Ford Fields ap apologizes that we had to cancel it, but I've been told that I'm not a use. I'm not allowed to use the word cancel because Lisa, as she tells me every time I speak. It has been postponed. We will be having the activity uh, in 2020. So as soon as uh, Ford Field or a similar type of uh, facility uh, has it available, we'll let everybody know. But um, if you haven't participated in one of these extravaganzas, they're really fun, but they're really informative. Um, again, you probably saw the invitation, but we have all of our solid vendors. We have Zebra. But not just Zebra, we have Zebra and all their divisions, their barcode label and ribbon division, their cannabis division, their printer division, their RF scanning division. So it's not just one person and a system engineer, it's usually a representative and a system engineer from all of their key divisions. So pretty exciting there. We have Bartender, our label uh, design software vendor, and our mobile management software vendor, Sony, as well as many other uh, custom software providers, et cetera. And not only do we uh, have all the equipment and the system engineers to answer the questions, we've got trials and demonstrations, Q&A sessions, et cetera. So it's, it's so important. We will be having another one. Uh, please expect to uh, get an invitation as we move forward. For a couple of the customers that, or prospects or companies that are on the, the call here that may not know who we are, I will take no more than 30 seconds. Lisa, get the stopwatch going. But real quickly, if it smells, if it eats like barcode scanning, RF communications, barcode printing, we do it. So BCC has been doing this for 25 years plus. We, de we deliver not only all the Zebra equipment from the printers to the RF scanners, to the Bluetooth scanners, the tether scanners, like we see in all the grocery stores, because that's all we can do these days is go to grocery stores. All those scanners, for the most part, um, if they don't say zebra on them, the, uh, the, the laser diode that's, that's in those scanners are patented by zebra. That used to be Motorola. That used to be Symbol Technologies. So we, uh, we support, we sell, we facil facilitate all of the scanners, all the equipment, uh, the wireless access points, the printers, and then we also have our own software. So our software integrates into SAP from a, a barcode scanning warehouse management inventory control session 
We've uh, written about 100 and I think actually about 300 transactions now that are real-time interactive with SAP and their inventory transactions. We also have a whole complete different solution set for QuickPrint. So we actually uh, integrate Bartender and our software to print through Zebra printers from data that resides in SAP. And then all the services and support that you need to be able to uh, complete the solution. So we do blueprinting and consulting and analysis. We do training, we do programming. Uh, and of course we finish up with support. We have, we have support contracts or we, or we do ad hoc support. If a customer needs uh, staging of a barcode scanner or a printer with IT settings or anything other specific to set up for symbologies, 2D, 1D, um, RFID. We have all, all that support and all that uh, personnel to help all of our customers with that. But today we're here to talk about Zebra. We're here to talk about uh, what Zebra is doing today, what they're doing tomorrow. Um, we have been a, a Zebra partner uh, for, again, 25 years. Um, we, um, we are, we're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. We're really excited with where they're going with their products. And with that, I'd like to turn over uh, the uh, ball, so to speak, to our friends at Zebra. All right, Eric, I'm gonna pass you the controls right now. All right. Okay. Let me show screen, show my screen. Can everybody see the presentation or can you see the other screen? I see the other screen. I don't see a presentation. Okay. All right. Then let me flip that over. Let me figure out how to do that. Sorry, with all these, uh, every, every web conferencing service is a little bit different. Yep. <laughs> I can see the presentation so now. When you, when you drop off Zoom and you get on, I forget which one this will go to webinar, then you get on uh, Skype and Teams, then it's uh, the controls are always a little bit different. Yep. Um, and then now let's do that. How's that? That is perfect. All right. So oh. great. Sorry about that. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the invite. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, as we mentioned, my name is Eric Hilton. I'm a regional portfolio manager for Zebra, and what that means is I get to focus on uh, our our three month, six month, twelve month, and even our eighteen month roadmap for all of our mobile computers. Uh, for what the next generations of everything are going to look like, um, a resource that all of our North American sellers and SEs uh, and all of our partner community can call on as we're coming out with a new device and we're talking about what the next generation of whatever looks like. Uh, I help to make sure that it gets introduced. I help to make sure that everybody understands the differences, uh, what the new products look like. And then I also get to take, uh, and this is a really, really important part of my job, I get to take all the voice of customer feedback. Uh, so as we're talking with our customers and here, in, and this is any customer in North America that I get to focus on, uh, as, as everybody's saying, man, I love it, but I really want uh, lighter, faster, stronger, more rugged, uh, better battery life, bigger screen, smaller screen, whatever they want in that device. I get to aggregate all of that feedback and then I go back to engineering and I argue on behalf of North America what we want here for our next generation of devices versus some of my counterparts that sit in uh, EMEA and APAC asking for things that they want and that their customers want in EMEA and APAC. Um, so it's a really fun job. I get to focus on uh, a lot of the new technology. Uh, and then I also get to do things like uh, like I'm doing right now, which is presenting to all of you uh, the roadmap of what Zebra has developed and released. We're gonna take a look back about six months of anything that's come out in the last six months or so. And then we're gonna take a little bit of a look forward on what's gonna come out in the next six months. Uh, so we'll, we'll kind of balance it minus six months and plus six months, uh, and then we'll, uh, um, it, 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 and it, excuse me, at any point, if there's questions, type them in. Uh, Lisa's going to read them off to me at the end, and we can, uh, we can take a step back and, and flip back through slides as needed. Uh, and then the other piece of that is if there's a deep dive that you'd like on a specific device, uh, work through BCC, uh, and we can set up specific presentations to, to meet the specific need that you're, you'd like to look into. All right. 
Of course, it's a Zebra presentation. It's a corporate presentation. We need a corporate slide. We'll get through this one really quick, I promise. Uh, the important part here, uh, just as we, we said a minute ago, uh, Zebra's not going anywhere. Um, we're, we're, we're here. Uh, we're focused on making sure we, we are part of the solution in our current climate around, uh, uh, around coronavirus and around the, the concerns that we all see. Uh, we are focused on making sure that we are part of the solution, whether that's more devices that are healthcare grade and able to be wiped down and able to be uh, with caustic chemicals and disinfected uh, from more of our healthcare customers. Uh, we're seeing some of those actually leak into the retail space and into the uh, warehouse space as customers are really focused on making sure that we disinfect uh, all of our devices. So through that, uh, and through that that level of uh, that diligence and that investment that we make every single year into R and D, uh, we've actually uh, captured number one market share in all four of these categories, which we consider our four core pillars. Um, now we don't do it alone. We've got great partners like BCC that uh, that help us down this path, uh, and we you know we always strive to to not just be. Uh, the best from a technical perspective, but the easiest to work with, and uh, and and the the like I mentioned earlier, part of the solution, uh, whether that's our current climate or more of a long term uh, meeting your business needs. So specifically, we're going to talk about uh, mobile computing first. We'll get into printers in a minute, uh, but this is our mobile computing portfolio. This is there's a lot of devices on here, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about some categories of devices, and then we'll get into some specifics here in a minute. Uh, but and then as we answer questions, we may fla flash back to this slide because this is a really great slide. Um, I use I start almost every presentation with this slide because it is so focused on all of our mobile computing products. Um, we do have uh, it. We'll start in the top left over here with our enterprise communicators or enterprise computers. Um, so this is the EC30. It's a small device designed specifically around communication. Uh, think. I want to give a device to every associate. I want them to be able to do simple price checking apps or simple good uh, go, no go, good, bad type of applications. And most importantly, I want them to be able to communicate with all of their associates and all of their employees that are around them uh, to be able to ask questions remotely. Um, so I want to be able to have that, we'll call it a walkie talkie type experience, but on a mobile computer because I already have Wi-Fi networks stood up in my environment. I don't also want to go set up an LMR type uh, two-way radio communication. Uh, we also see uh, some a, an additional and a new set of, of devices that we're working into is, is what we call our PH series, our point of sale hubs. And what these devices are going to allow us to do is utilize either our mobile computers or a standalone solution as a point of sale, so as a point of sale device and as a point of sale solution. Um, so this could potentially uh, be an answer for uh, a, either a hybrid buy online, pick up in store type checkout solution, uh, a flex checkout. Uh, maybe I need to stand up three or four additional uh, checkout lanes during peak um, or the true traditional fixed pick out, uh, checkout solution, which would be the PH20. Our personal shopper series, no major developments there. We are talking about potentially a next generation of that device, uh, but this is a device that we saw a significant uh, success with, specifically in EMEA in Europe, uh, with a, a purchase, uh, a PS20, a personal shopper type device where uh, when you walk in the store, you grab a device and you, you, you start scanning as you're walking through the aisles. Here in North America, uh, we see quite a few, uh, specifically this EDA family, so this TC family. So the TC2, which is our, our entry level, uh, our least rugged device, it's also our least life cycle type device, our shortest life cycle. We have our mid tier in the TC5 family, and then we have our premium tier TC7 family. Uh, lots of success on the TC5 and the TC7 families. Uh, you'll see these in, in a number of retailers and a number of grocery stores, uh, price checking apps, um, even, even mobile point of sale. And then ultimately that TC7 family, that ultra rugged uh, device that uh, under the wing of almost every major airliner in, in the US, uh, trying to scan, scanning bags on and off the planes, things like that. Um, so you'll see that in the ultra rugged environments. 
in our warehouse devices uh, with keys, so that's a big differentiator as we start talking about the TC5 family, there's touch screen only, touch computer, uh, versus the MC, the mobile computers, you'll start to see uh, keys and continue to see keys in these devices. Uh, there, there is, There has been a refresh of the MC3 family, so the MC3200 has now shifted into the MC3300. We will also be releasing an MC3300X. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Uh, in the last year, we also released our MC93 family. Uh, so that's a, a next generation of that MC9 family that has been such a strong device in the marketplace for so many years. Uh, that MC9300 is a really strong device. Uh, that nine, that 9000 family from the 9050, 9060, 9090, and 9190, uh, all the way through all those generations, uh, that device continues to be a very strong uh, device for our portfolio. TC8300 uh, right here on the right side. Um, so that's that TC8000, TC8300, that's, that's a warehouse specific device that is all touch. Um, they're, they're, because of the form factor of this device, we actually see a 12% productivity gain just because the operator isn't, uh, isn't scanning and then flipping their wrist to look at the screen. The, the scanner is actually positioned such that while the operator is scanning, they are staring at the screen. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, moving down into our VC family, our VC70, VC80, VC80X, and VC8300, all great devices, slightly different form factors in regard to what screen size they have, and then also what operating system they run. Uh, so the VC70 and VC80 are Windows-based. VC70 is a Windows CE7 based device uh, with, with Microsoft ultimately pulling the plug, uh, end of lifing support for CE7. Uh, we are going to, sorry about that, uh, with, um, with Microsoft ultimately end of lifing support for, uh, for, that, for Windows CE7. Uh, we, we are still offering that device. We still have a number of customers that require CE7. But ultimately, uh, we'll continue to do everything we can on CE7 devices uh, as long as Microsoft will allow us to. Uh, moving into the VC80, that's big windows, uh, full-blown Windows 10 on this device. Uh, and, and that's going to be around for a foreseeable future as a Windows replacement for the vehicle. VC80X and VC8300 Android variants of those devices, either in a full screen or in a half screen with a keyboard. Uh, moving into our wearables, we do have the WT6000, which is our all-touch wearable. We'll talk a little bit more about that and an accessory that has recently been released for the, R the WT6000. We'll talk about some ring scanners, and we may get into our HD4000 a little bit if we have some time. I want to make sure we, uh, we leave plenty of time for questions at the end, uh, but we have developed our own head-mounted display or HUD as, as a number of uh, customers refer to it. Uh, the HD4000 and some of our back-end software uh, is, is proving to uh, increase productivity significantly and decrease training time uh, at a significant rate. We're talking uh, training time instead of uh, four or five days to get an operator up to speed from a picking perspective, we're talking 30 minutes of training time. And, and that, that is significant ROI savings. The last section here is the, our large screen tablet portfolio. So we do have our ET5156 family, uh, which is 8-inch or 10-inch, Windows or Android, Wi-Fi only or cellular capable. And then we also have our L10 ultra-rugged devices uh, that, that are 10-inch screen, uh, Windows or Android again. And these are that true ultra-rugged use, use case, uh, but I need a large screen in that portfolio. And lastly, we have our R12 device here, uh, which is a widescreen, Windows only, 12-inch uh, tablet. So, like I said, there's a lot of information on this slide. Uh, we'll send this out later, uh, so don't feel like you have to digest it or screenshot it right now. Uh, but, but ultimately, we'll get into some details here, and then, uh, and then we'll answer any questions as we, as we go through. All right, uh, specific updates on the, w, or on the MC family. So I mentioned the MC9300. That device is fully released now. Uh, it released, it was a phased rollout throughout. Um, throughout 2019. 
and that includes our newest generation of chipsets, our newest generations of Android uh, on that MC9 family that we know so well and that has been so successful. TC8300 is a similar uh, same chipset, um, so that's that's one really nice thing about Zebra devices is we standardize on one chipset for as long as possible, which means that that same generation of Android, all of those applications, any update packages, it's the same across all form factors. So management and deployment of those devices becomes significantly easier because you don't need to pick one device, you could pick one platform of device and then find the right mix to meet that, to meet your each specific use case. I did mention the MC3300 will be getting a refresh. We're going to be bringing it up to that same Android chipset. Um, that'll be the MC3300X and that will be releasing uh, here in Q, later in Q2, early Q3. The VC family, so uh, no major updates here. Um, the VC8300, which is that half screen device, half screen, half keyboard, uh, for any of our VH10 customers out there, um, this is a direct drop-in replacement for that VH10. Uh, this is running Android on that latest generation of chipset. And then the VC80X, uh, Android variant of our full screen vehicle computer. We're gonna talk a little bit about the TC5257. This has been a very, very strong device. There's a lot of use cases, a lot of white papers out there where a number of our retail customers uh, and even some of our TNL, LTL uh, and courier customers have deployed I'm talking hundreds of thousands of this device. Um, this is a very strong device in our portfolio. Um, and it is, this is the second generation. Uh, we are expecting that there will be a third generation of this device coming out in uh, the Q3 timeframe, and that will be featured up a little bit uh, in regard to a better better screen display um, and a better chipset, uh, faster chipset in, inside that device. Uh, we're investing in that area that's had so much success for us. In the last year, though, I want to talk about one specific thing. Uh, in the last year, we have released a new accessory. And this is a, a little bit of a paradigm shift, so I want to focus on it for a second. Instead of deploying a mobile computer to my operators and installing potentially a desktop workstation for that, for that associate to also use, where they can walk up and have a full-size monitor and a keyboard and a mouse and all of these extra pieces and peripherals that they might need, instead what I can do is I can create uh, that same experience using our TC5257 workstation cradle. And what I get out of that is listed right here, a single slot charging cradle with additional ports for an HDMI out, ethernet in, and four USB ports on the sides of that device. So this literally allows me to utilize my TC52 or 57 as the brain of an entire desktop workstation. That's less expensive than deploying both a, a computer and a TC52. It's also less management and less, less to deploy uh, all of those devices. Now, when I need to be mobile, I take my TC52 with me. When I need to be docked and I need that keyboard and I need that mouse, I simply walk up, drop it in the dock, and I utilize my monitor, my monitor, my mouse, and my keyboard. We're going to shift into the WT6000 really quickly. Um, so this is, again, covering some of the updates that we've released in the last six months. Um, this WT6000 with the external keyboard uh, accessory. So the, the important word there is accessory. Uh, you can see how it snaps onto the side of the WT6000. Uh, we have a number of customers out there that love our WT4 series, the 4070, 4090, 41 and 0. Um, but when we, when we switch to the WT6000 and when we release that product, we ask them to also do a little, bit, a little bit of a paradigm shift away from physical keys into a touchscreen format. And some of our customers through, through Voice of Customer, uh, we heard that, man, I really love it, but I really want a physical keypad. So we developed this accessory that snaps onto the side. Uh, it draws power from the main device, so it's not an additional charge, it's not an additional plug or anything like that. Uh, it simply snaps on the side, and then there's a cleat that, uh, that screws into the back uh, to hold it in place and also uh, shift that mounting mechanism over a little bit um, so that it mounts properly on the wrist mount and is ergonomically accurate. 
We have released a new ring scanner. So for any of our customers that have used the RS-507, RS-507X, or the RS-6000, uh, we've released a new ring scanner that is a single finger 1D or 2D ring scanner. Uh, so anybody that's familiar with the RS-6000, imagine that same performance, that same ultra aggressive 1D or 2D scan engine, but in a much smaller package. Uh, this fits uh, into a very small single finger type package. Uh, and then there are four different trigger mechanisms that are available for this device, and they're all modular. So right here where the trigger and the, the, um, the ring scanner mount, that actually separates and you could put on a different trigger. Um, so it's a completely modular design. Uh, we do have a single finger trigger. This one shown here on the right is a double finger trigger. So there's this yellow button on the left and on the right. And then there's also a lanyard mount for those that don't need uh, excessive or uh, high throughput scanning. They just need to be able to scan every now and then. Um, they can wear it around their, their neck as a lanyard if they need to. Again, same scan engine. Uh, you could even switch from shift to shift. If uh, you, you're going to go do inventory once a month, you may want some of these uh, double triggers or single triggers in the, in the back room, but you may not need it on all of them. Uh, maybe your standard use case is around a lanyard, and then when you're going to go do inventory that once a month, maybe you pull out uh, this double trigger and you go out and you scan at, their, at your higher rate. There is also a back of hand mount uh, that's not shown here, uh, but is available. Moving in quickly into our big screen portfolio, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the ET5 family, this is a rugged device uh, with or without a case. Uh, you can make it IP67 sealed, uh, eight inch, 10 inch, Windows or Android, any variant of, the, of those options. Um, we, we see a lot of success with this device. This was released in Q3 of 2019. So this is a relatively new device. Uh, it's, it was a refresh. This is the second generation of that device in the same chassis. All the legacy accessories, the ET50 and 55 accessories, are compatible with the 5156. The L10 and the R12, so you see this X shown here. Uh, Zebra, uh, as we grow, we continue to acquire additional portfolios and additional companies. Uh, one of those companies was a company called Explore Technologies. And with that, we introduced the X-Slate L10 uh, and X-Slate R12 families into the portfolio. And what that offers is an ultra rugged, premium tier, uh, we'll call it an extreme duty cycle uh, type, of a, type of a tablet use case. Um, I, I, if that means I want to put it on a forklift and I want to run it like a vehicle computer, I can. If that means I want to put it outside the four walls in a rugged field service or utility or uh, oil and gas and pipelines or on a refinery, this can withstand all of those. Uh, and even to the point that the L10 actually comes uh, standard as a hazardous environment device with class one div two rating. And then, like I mentioned the, earlier, the R12 is that widescreen 12-inch device uh, that comes in. This one is Windows only um, versus the L10 that has, uh, you can see the different form factors here, uh, but then this also comes in Windows or in Android. And again, it's that same platform, that same level of Android that is on all of our mobile computers. This is a great differentiation slide. I won't spend a lot of time on it. If you've got a tablet use case and you're trying to figure out which use, which tablet to fit into, this is a great way to sit here and one slide, figure out what tablet or tablets might meet that need um, based on screen size, drop spec, uh, IP ceiling for ruggedness, uh, CPU rating, maybe I've got a really intensive application, or maybe I don't. Maybe I can get away with a, a Pentium processor instead of a Core i5 or a Core i7. Uh, we have that ability to, to stretch throughout the entire process there and throughout that, all of those configurations. With our ET family, uh, we are releasing a new form factor. So this form factor allows for integrated scanning. Anybody that's familiar with our ET5 today, we do offer a scanner attachment that snaps onto the back of the device right here. And essentially what we found and what we heard is that customers want a slimmer, lighter form factor, uh, more easily integrated so I'm not purchasing a tablet plus a rugged frame plus a scanner back. Now I, this comes completely integrated with what you see here and there is a scanner embedded right here. Uh, it's circled in red because it's kind of hard to see um, but essentially that's where that scanner aimer is and then you do get two triggers, uh, the yellow buttons here shown on the back. 
So like I said, instead of getting a tablet plus the rugged frame plus the scanner back, it comes exactly as you see here. Um, and actually compared to that, uh, the tablet with those accessories, what's available or what was available previous to this, uh, we actually see a 23% weight reduction with this device right here not to mention the additional cost savings associated with not having to purchase multiple SKUs and not having to assemble those uh, once they get to your environment. Uh, I've got the ET5 family accessories shown here. All of these are still applicable to the 5156. Uh, they're all still applicable uh, to that new form factor that we just talked about also. Now, when we get into Android and we start talking about Android, we immediately start talking about what's different from Zebra's Android to a standard Android deployment. And these are all, every little icon shown on this is actually one thing that we have done uh, from 2009 when we started developing Android. We started with Xamarin and Android EMDK, and we have developed all of these applications along the way to make our Android stronger, more reliable, more efficient, and more secure than a standard Android deployment. Now, these are all broken down uh, into what we call our mobility DNA suite. Anything you see here with green text is free. Comes with the device. Uh, as long as you've got service contracts, uh, you get lifeguard security updates. That is our commitment to our customers that we are going to support that device for an extended period of time. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, and then things like worry-free Wi-Fi, where I can control uh, what my Wi-Fi settings are on the device, so I can control when it roams or when it when it uh, what channels it accesses versus other devices, so I can partition my network a little bit more dynamically um, than than specifically having to uh, just say, yeah, that's the access point, go connect to the access point. Uh, I get some device level control of that of that um, Wi-Fi Wi-Fi radio. Uh, things like Stage Now for more easily deployed devices. Uh, instead of opening a device and finding my Wi-Fi networks and connecting to uh, uh, connecting to it and having to type in my security code on every single device, uh, now I can just scan one barcode and all of those settings are imported into the device. Uh, we do see some significant enhancements around around this. Uh, now you can load applications to the device. You can install them. You could configure certain things. Um, basically, anything that you need to do to deploy that device, you can do it straight from stage now. Again, it's free. It's pre-installed on the device. Uh, that's one of those things that sets Zebra's Android apart from, uh, from some of the standard Android offerings out there. I will talk about LifeGuard very briefly. Um, this is a change, and this is why we're going to talk about it. So historically, our commitment was that we would offer uh, support patches for th uh, three years after Google stopped supporting an operating system. So, for example, if Google stopped supporting Android O, Oreo, in, we'll call it 2020, we, and that's just a hypothetical, we can committed that we would support, for all of our customers, we would support Android Oreo for an additional two years, and a third year was purchasable as an option. Now, we've actually taken that and made it even simpler so that we don't have different dates from an end of sale and an end of support perspective. Now we're just gonna simplify everything. We are offering support for Android OS, which includes security patches for the entire life cycle of our device. So let me say that again, the entire life cycle of our device, if we can sell it or if we can fix it from a break fix perspective, we will still be writing security patches for our devices. Now, all, most of our devices are broken into either this three and three category, where we guarantee we will sell it for three years, and then we guarantee we'll fix it for three years after that, a four and four or a five and five life cycle. And you'll start to see this as an, as an example, um, we won't ever force a customer onto that next generation just because we've come out with a new one. Um, if you're familiar with the TC7 family, we currently sell the TC70, the 70X, and the 72. So three generations of the same device because we are committed to that five and five life cycle. Uh, so because we're committed to selling it for five years and then fixing it for five years after that, we will still honor that commitment because we know we have a number of customers out there that um, you know things change throughout five years. 
do I need 100 devices? Well, maybe I open some new stores and maybe I need 150 devices. I want you to be able to come back to us and get the same device, deploy it the same way you deployed it two years ago, three years ago, and still be able to get up and running, uh, not have some mixed environment out there in your in, with your devices. All right, we'll talk a little bit about printers. Um, I wanna make sure we leave plenty of time for, uh, for questions here. Um, so printers, Zebra is continuing to innovate and continuing to develop additional on our uh, additional features and functionalities on all of our printer line, whether that's our industrial tabletop printers, our mobile printers shown here in the middle, or our desktop printers. Um, and then we also have some, some card printers. Uh, we won't go into card, they're a little bit of a niche, um, but we'll focus here on, on these three lines. So um, specifically, uh, we'll also talk a little bit about print DNA. Um, we're gonna save that till the end though. So industrial print line, um, this is our tabletop printers. And essentially what these do is these are the big iron. These are the ones that pump labels out all day, every day, um, hold a full, uh, full large roll of labels. And I mean, the, the ZT6 is rated to run nonstop, three shifts a day, seven days a week, nonstop. Uh, and then you move down duty cycle, you move down into the, the ZT4 and the ZT2, the ZT2 series. You also run, uh, you also move down in size physically on, the, on those devices um, and capabilities. So uh, the nice thing, and you can see some of these in the ZT6 family, if you see some yellow inside the printer, uh, I don't have a good picture of it on these slides, unfortunately, but essentially anything, when an operator calls you and says, hey, this printer's not working right, Anything that a, an operator should be touching is yellow. So that's a very clear statement you can make early on so that the customer, the associate who's trying to repair in the field isn't you know, touching different things and trying to move different pieces and parts. Anything that they should be touching in the field is yellow. So that way you can uh, more easily and more efficiently guide them through that troubleshooting perspective. Uh, we will see continued uh, investment here for example, the ZT4 series, as you can see, uh, ZT411 and ZT421 will be released. And those have a, a touch screen with graphics on the, on the device. Um, and that allows for additional, uh, more easily uh, user interface and more easy, uh, easily um, troubleshooting perspective and things like that. Our desktop family, uh, continued investment here. Uh, this is for some of our lighter duty cycle or smaller um, smaller print volumes, uh, but additional investments here. Uh, we do have now the ZD500R, which is an RFID capable device. Uh, so this is going to also not just print a label, but also as it prints, encode RFID into that label. Uh, and then also check it to ensure that the tag wasn't broken uh, or anything like that, but to ensure that the, it does still function like it's supposed to. So this is, uh, like I mentioned, the desktop family, smaller duty cycle, uh, smaller form factor, uh, and, and a little bit uh, uh, simpler uh, from, from a deployment perspective, uh, if you don't have the ability to, uh, the size on the desk or anything like that, uh, to deploy a full size tabletop printer. We get into mobile, uh, we do have some additional mobile uh, devices, mobile printers that are coming out, the ZQ610, 620, and now we have released the ZQ630. Those are all based on width of print. And essentially what that allows you to do is be mobile, whether it's on a forklift or wearing it on someone's hip, uh, print a receipt or print a label uh, at the point of pickup so that that way I'm not printing a whole set of labels and then running down and, and trying to you know, peel one off after the other. Now, as soon as I need the label at that point of, of, of labeling a device or labeling an asset, I can immediately print one, tear it, peel it and stick it on. And then of course we do offer uh, media, uh, various different types of media, qualities of media that you can uh, um, utilize in our Zebra printers. Uh, the nice thing about Zebra media is if you utilize our media, and you utilize our printers, we will give you free print heads. Uh, that's our print head protection program. We are so confident that our media is the highest quality standard that we will give you free print heads just for using our media uh, in our printers. So work with BCC on that. Uh, if you have any questions around that, we can, uh, we can definitely uh, get that program started. Now, 
the last thing I'm going to talk about is what we call print DNA. We talked about mobility DNA earlier, and this was for mobile computers. Now, the same mindset, the same functionality around print DNA, and these are software tools that either sit on the printer or they sit on our mobile computers, and these offer the ability to use or deploy or manage your printers more efficiently and more effectively so that now I'm not worried about uh, uh, security on my printer because I can update the firmware over the air. Uh, I can connect to it via Bluetooth, um, this, this tap and pair logo. So now instead of, uh, instead of trying to find the Bluetooth radio or instead of trying to find the right IP address for the right printer or lugging my laptop out to the, the warehouse to plug in a USB cable to manage that printer, now I can take a Zebra mobile computer, walk up to the side of the printer and touch them together now I can immediately Bluetooth pair those two devices together, and then I get an application that pops up, and I can manage that printer. I could do a test print. I could change all the Wi-Fi settings if I needed to. I can completely configure that printer wirelessly from a mobile computer instead of also having to figure out, uh, you know, like I mentioned, carrying a laptop out or, uh, or finding it on the network and, and managing it remotely. Uh, we also do have a number of different tools um, like PrintStation, which is an application, a free application that sits on our mobile computers uh, that is a direct link straight to a printer. So for super simple uh, applications where I don't need uh, a full backend WMS sending ZPL code to the printer, maybe I preload a, a format, pre-build a format, and I just type in the information I want and send it straight to the printer via Bluetooth. I don't have to worry about also uh, standing up some big print server or anything like that. So keep that in mind uh, for super simple use cases, like I mentioned. Um, we also do get in from a management perspective. The last one I'm gonna talk about is Printer Profile Manager Enterprise. And what that allows you to do is see the health of your printer. Uh, if you're seeing that the printer has uh, been offline for three days, a, an automatic flag can pop up and say, hey, there's an issue with this printer. It's been offline for three days. We don't know why. Uh, maybe it got unplugged and nobody knows about it. Maybe the network went down. Uh, maybe somebody cut the Ethernet cord running to it, whatever the case may be. Um, this, this allows you to, uh, to see the status of the printer. Uh, for example, the print head's open. Why is the print head open? Oh, there was an error. Okay, if I keep seeing print head open over and over and over again, maybe there's an issue with that print head and I need to go out and I need to replace that print head. Uh, that's it. That, that's uh, the management tool around pre printer profile manager enterprise really gives you that strength and that ability to manage all of a, a large deployment of printers remotely across an entire environment. So I said a whole lot right there. Uh, Lisa, I'm assuming there's gonna be some questions uh, that, that came in as I flew through a lot of those details. Perfect, thanks so much, Eric, I appreciate it. So okay. I'll go ahead and get started with uh, some of the questions that have popped up Okay. Um, the first one I'm seeing here is, is there an official end of life for the MC92CE? No, there is not an official end of life for the MC92CE. We are still going to sell that device as long as we can. We know there are a number of customers that still need it. Um, that's a question I get very frequently because there are a lot of customers out there that are still on CE uh, and just aren't able to move over yet. So we're not gonna force anybody uh, we're going to continue to sell that device as long as we can get components, as long as we have the availability. Now, the hiccup on that, if there is some extreme Wi-Fi vulnerability or some issue with Windows CE 7, and it is a, core, a true in the CE uh, code, we won't have access to that. So if there is some significant vulnerability, um, essentially Microsoft has, has listed the dates where they get to stop answering that phone. Um, so there is that risk, um, but uh, like I said, you know, CE has been out for a long time. It's pretty stable. Uh, we're pretty confident that it's going to be strong and that it's going to be around, uh, and we still know that there are some customers that need it. Perfect. And uh, just to piggyback my own question on what you just said, what is that date that Microsoft is expecting to stop answering their phone? Oh, I believe it is, I don't have it right in front of me. For CE7, it is April 13th of 2021, I believe. Okay. 
Uh, Windows Embedded Handheld was January 14th of this year, and I believe CE7 is the April of next year. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then um, I know that we saw that the MC3300X will be coming out. Do you happen to have the date in front of you when the MC3300 will stop being manufactured? So that the MC3300 is a is is a five year device. So it's a it's similar to the MC93 where it's a five year commitment. Uh, we released that device in I believe 2018. Um, I can look up exactly, um, but we should we still have uh, about two to three years of runway left on the MC3300 before we would end stop selling it. Uh, and then when we release the MC3300X here in the next quarter or so, uh, we will get five years of selling out of that device also. Perfect. Um, is the workstation cradle available for the MC9300? No, unfortunately it's not. It is only available for the TC52 today. Um, there's some conversation uh, around developing one for a TC7. Um, there is the opportunity to utilize that, that point of sale hub, that PH10. Uh, it does offer a very similar functionality. It is just one extra component that would need to be ordered. Um, but it does still offer that same same functionality for using uh, an MC an, an, any MC or TC device as the brain, for lack of a better term, as the computing power of a full blown workstation. So if you if you want to investigate that a little bit more, let me know. We can probably take that offline. Um, but there is uh, the potential. Um, it's not as clean as the TC52 workstation cradle, uh, but there is still that same functionality there. Okay. And then this one, it looks like you already answered, but just for anybody else that might be curious, uh, will are the accessories different for the ET51 from the ET5X? And I believe you showed the screen saying that they can all be, all the accessories are the same? Correct. So the only thing, uh, and we don't actually, yeah, we do show it. So there's only one piece on this entire page that doesn't work from an ET50 to an ET51 uh, is this internal battery. Uh, physically, the battery is a little bit different size uh, from a voltage and a watt and an amperage perspective. This battery does change slightly. Um, everything else, so anything I would consider a true accessory versus a service part, like an internal battery, uh, all accessories are still compatible, still work. Same form factor, everything is still fine there. The only thing you can't do is pop this internal battery out of an ET5055 and put it into a 5156. Okay. And then um, the ZT410. Yep. When is that end of life date? I don't have that in front of me. I'm going to have to follow up with you on that one um, okay. with some of my counterparts that specifically focus on printing. I don't have that date. I, I don't even want to estimate because I'm sure I will estimate wrong. <laughs> well, okay, we appreciate that. <laughs> no hey, Lisa, Lisa, this is Rick. I'll look that up because, because it's really um, the ZT410, ZT420 have really kind of hit their uh, and with the launch of the ZT411, 4, uh, 421. So give me a second and I'll, I'll find it and get you, get you some answers. Oh, yeah, perfect. and the nice thing there is, uh, again, those are still serviceable for an extended period of time. Uh, and any printer that we make, and this is one thing that our, print, our, 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 our printing portfolio does very, very well, is all of these are backward compatible. They're all drop-in replacements. Uh, so any ZPL language that you've got written for, I saw some ZPL the other day that was 25 years old, and uh, and as soon as uh, as soon as I dropped in a new printer, it uh, it, it printed without any issue um, because it's all backward compatible. Um, so uh, and then ultimately, as as we as we get closer to that end of life date, we can definitely get demos out and everything like that so that everybody can certify uh, the ZT411 uh, moving forward. So okay. just just to follow up, the Z actually the ZT410. 420 end of sale right uh the last book date was yesterday um last ship date will be june 1st but the zt 411 and 421 are already in production and released uh and as as eric was saying there's no there's no real uh, you know the, the code the code just moves and the, the the link os operating system uh is somewhat ubiquitous across our 
our um, <clears throat> printer platforms uh, when it comes to like the ZT series and the, the uh, ZD series. Perfect. Thanks for getting that so quick, Rick. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Our, our last question is a little off uh, the track of what we were talking about today, but I had a question come over called, can the serial number of the DS3678 be put inside the unit as the sticker on the outside is being removed? Um, this is needed for maintenance and depot repair. I believe people are wearing down that information yeah, on that, that scanner. That sticker that sits on there. Um, yeah. I want to investigate. Let me let me take that question offline. I want to investigate with some of our engineering friends uh, in it's specifically focused on that DS36 family and find out uh, it may be in the device. And I believe it is in the firmware, in, hard coded in the firmware. Um, the the question is going to be how do I extract it? And so that's, I want to get that, that process uh, understood and identified, and then I'll follow back up with that question. Yeah, and Eric, just a side note, we've had this question a few times, because sometimes, you know, maybe the scanner gets run over, the serial yep. number's worn out, and now I can't plug it into the computer to try to get that serial number. So we're just wondering if there's that third option of being able to find that serial number for maintenance. Yeah, I'll find out um, specifically. That's going to add another wrinkle to it if it's been run over. Um, uh, that that adds that adds a lot of wrinkles to things when yeah. you, when you run over when you when you run over it with a forklift. Um, but uh, well, let me see what I can find out on on that because I, I I have heard that question multiple times. Okay, perfect. So that is all the questions for today. Um, again, thanks everybody for attending. If you do want that. BCCD hand sanitizer that you would have got if you came to our April event today. Um, please shoot myself or the rep that invited you your address that we can ship it to within the next hour. We're shipping it out today. Um, so if you can get that over, that'd be great. And Eric and Rick, really appreciate your time and all the great information you presented to us today. No problem. Thank you for having us and thank you uh, for everybody for attending. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.